I'm Pod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. And this week, England versus Ireland in a battle of sticks and knives and horrible red hair dye. The Fighting Prince of Donegal from 1966. Donegal. Donegal. Don- Donegal. 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 We can stay free! The Fighting Prince of Donegal, a fiery young rebel not yet 20, defiantly challenges the empire that destroyed his nation's freedom. As I'd never seen you before. We Irish just aren't used to alliances. But I know it's the only way for us to win. I know it. Walt Disney presents dynamic Peter McHenry and beautiful Susan Hampshire, talented new romantic adventure team in the lusty legend of brash, high-spirited youth on a wild escapade of rollicking rough-and-tumble action. Take him! Trapped behind enemy walls, nothing could stop these unpredictable young rebels who fought and acted as one in their reckless pursuit of freedom. Or is it Donegal or Donegal? I want to say Gull. Donegal. Okay. I found this positively delightful. Yeah, it was great. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I was really worried that you thought you were like bored. It was a little slow, but it was still delightful. No, I was much better than I thought it was going to be. But of course, all of these British, Disney historical, fictionish films are fucking delightful. But it's They're like, all great. It was it was delightful in the weirdest spots. Like, there were so many scenes where I was like, oh my god, that is amazing. That shouldn't have really, on the surface, really worked, but it really did. It really, yeah, it was really good. It was really fun. Fun. A fun, fun watch. Fun movie, yeah. Um, I guess I'll just read the synopsis. Yeah, we'll just (laughs) jump right in. Um, You can't watch this on Disney Plus, unfortunately, which is really. But I feel like this was the same with Rob Roy. You couldn't watch Rob Roy on Disney Plus either. I believe even The Sword and the Rose we couldn't watch. So I don't know what the deal is with those movies, but Disney's got to get on it because this this was great. Get on the stick, Diaz. Uh, The Fighting Prince of Donegal. Adventure, romance, historical. The Queen fears Spain will attack and post English soldiers in Ireland. That's not even clear. No, that that's not clear, and it's not a synopsis of what happened. There was no Queen in this movie. <laughs> she was referenced, but she wasn't. I was a little disappointing, but I, I was a little disappointed in that too. Yeah. I kind of was hoping that because it seemed like when he first met that Viceroy guy when they took him away, yeah, it seemed like that he was going to meet the Queen, right. And then it all just turned into Captain Leeds nonsense. Oh my god. And it's like, oh wait, no, we're not we're going lower with this, not higher. Maybe they thought it would be too similar to like Sword in the Rose if they did that or They don't care about that. Well, I know, but I mean maybe they were just I don't know, but With yeah. the laughing German king? Was that or was that Rob Roy? That was Rob Roy Roy. Oh wait, was the, the king that was like really fat and was, and he was German? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was Rob Roy. Yeah, it was Rob I think. Roy. It was Sword of the Rose had the French guys. I they can't were in remember France. now. No, 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 that's how it went. No, oh, she wait. went to France later. No, 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 it was it was Sword in the Rose that had because it was she was the king's sister. Oh um, yeah, maybe. yeah, it was yeah. Sword in the Rose yeah. because what, both great movies back to back. So our director Michael O. I can't Herlihy Herlihy. Directed Smith mm-hmm. and, uh, and a butt ton of TV, so many TV movies. Like I don't think I've seen and TV any. shows. Like it's just ridiculous how prolific this guy was. But TV movies up the wazoo. Yeah. None that I have seen or heard. Well, of, nobody. But... Well, TV movies were literally fire and forget. They would put it on TV and everybody would forget about it the next day. <sighs> just miss TV movies. I miss Lifetime original movies. Oh, I miss all. I, I love Lifetime original movies. It's amazing movies. that they don't do any of that shit anymore. People like it. It doesn't. It just. Well, it's probably hard to compete with all the streaming services now that people can watch their favorite movies over and over again all the time. And so I, why why would you watch a TV movie? I guess. But why not just make cheap movies that are that people are interested in? That's all I'm getting at. I agree, because TV studios are stupid, movie studios are stupid, they just yeah. want to make a ton of money, they they don't see the value in Spider-Man the... 81! <laughs> no return to homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then two writers, Robert Westerby and Robert Riley. 
neither one of them did much. The Westerby guy was like a Disney staff writer. Well, yeah. He also wrote Greyfriars Bobby, which is another Disney movie, and The Three Lives of Thomasina, which is another Disney movie, which I feel like that was the one that we did get, and then we discovered it was a TV movie. Well, right, and Kathleen is the lead in that. Yeah, which is kind of a bummer, because she wasn't horrible. No, not at all. She was good. She's not as good as, like... She wasn't in the movie enough, but she was good. She wasn't bad. Yeah. So, speaking of that, Hugh, played by Pete McInerney... I don't know how I didn't realize until I was reading Because he had the red hair dye. I know, but I was like, what? But he seemed familiar the whole time. I was like, this guy has seen, like, his vibe is, like, familiar, but he's way better than this. That's what I mean. How is this the same zero guy from the Moon Spinners? This is not the same guy. That's why, that's when I was sitting on the couch and I was like, what? I was like, what? This is not the same guy. There's no way. But then, of course, I'm, oh, yeah, that is that guy's face. Yeah, it's that guy, yeah. That is that guy. We O'Donnells can do nothing by ourselves. No single clan is strong enough. Only if all the clans unite, the McSweeney's, the Maguire's, the O'Neill's, O'Connor's, every one of us, can we stand up to the English. And fight? No. Bargain from strength. Bargain? For what? To be left alone and free. Not occupied by English troops. Um, but he's just a hundred times better in this movie. I just, I don't know what It's the material. The material is yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, The Moon Spinners is a pretty lame movie. Well, The Moon Spinners didn't have good dialogue. It just was not... Yeah, the, when you have better material, it makes a big difference. Yeah. But yeah, he was really good. And um, really, he's not done much else than those two movies. No, not really. Which like, is, that's what he's famous for, and it's like, what? Okay. Yeah, not much else. And we talked about Kathleen, the Susan Hampshire. She just did a ton of TV... Yep. Also. Lots and lots of it. Like, episode on this show and that show. And then, like, she was on some show in the early 2000s that went, like, 67 episodes. Well, so she was show? like It was called Monarch of Glen, which obviously is a British show. Yeah, because she's British. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Well, I think all these people are British or Scottish or Irish. Yeah. And they're just playing along. Um, And then... Uh, Tom Adams, the O'Neill. Henry, the creep... You mean he's such a sleazy I guy? I fucking love no, him I do, so okay, much. I didn't, His character is so great. I didn't like him at first, no, and I then didn't. as soon as he went to jail, then I was like, okay, I do like this guy. Yeah, he's a. Well, we came to bargain for your freedom, and the discussion led to hard words between the charming Captain Leeds and myself. So I join you here. Joining me in a dungeon is hardly going to help to gain our freedom. Well, two heads are better than one to plan an escape, and three better than. You're lucky yours is still on your shoulders. Of all the irresponsible stupid... Why? You didn't get very far trying to get away by yourself, did you? I was me here to help you. They don't stand a chance. He, he, and then he became my favorite. Him going to jail was like the smartest thing he ever did. Like, he was just like, oh, I, I got an idea. We're gonna get out of here. Yeah. You need help, brother. And his most famous thing was The Great Escape. Which is a big thing, I mean. It's, yeah. That's a pretty famous movie. Because also, the guy who played Leeds, Gordon Jackson, was also in The Great Escape. Yeah. I mean, not, but then not much else. Well, he was, like, really big in, like, 1948 to 1958. He did a ton of movies. Not just TV, but a ton yeah, of movies. Yeah, he, he did. He did. He was a actor. Um, And the last one I had, because I... I didn't, I didn't take anybody well, else down. Th- I thought he looked so familiar was the guy who played Martin, who helped him escape from the prison. Martin! Maurice Roevs. He was in Last of the Mohicans, one of the generals. And I was like, okay, that's oh, where I recognize that guy's weird. face from. Because okay. it was really bothering me because I'm like, God, that guy's face looks familiar. Can't remember who he played, but that's the only thing that I've seen that I would make sense that I recognize him from. Have you seen that movie? I saw it in the movie theater. It's a great movie. When I was a movie. kid. It's a... I actually kind of don't remember it as much as I probably should. I feel like I don't remember it that well either, but I just remember it's really good. And I remember I think it has a really sad ending probably. Well, yeah, of course. It's the last <laughs> of the Mohicans. Is it going to be... Of course as, it has a sad ending. Is it going to be as horrible as Squanto? Or, oh yeah, your whole tribe was just slaughtered and killed. I think it's almost... Sucks ex- to suck. I think it's almost exactly Squanto. <laughs> Oh, we should watch it sometime. Mm, yeah, maybe. Did you get any fun facts? No. Well, yeah, kind of. Some guy named Mark Eden filmed the first three days of this movie as Hugh. He fell off a horse 
got his foot caught in a rabbit hole and busted his ankle. So not only was in the, was he not in this movie, but they ended his five year Disney contract. I wonder if he was supposed to be in the Moon Spinners. Was that after this? I don't know, but I'm just no, curious. I think that was before this. Uh, hold, please. Yeah, that's a really good please hold. Mm-hmm. Of which one came first, or did they go like, "Well, this guy was milk toast"? Oh, the moon no, Moon Spinners did come first. Okay, yeah, never so mind. Like, okay, we can get we can get this guy. He doesn't have anything else going for him because he was so horrible in Moon Spinners. We so. know he can do something. Hey, kid, can we dye your hair red? He's like, yeah. sure, I got nothing else going on. Yeah. Why not? So the real Hugh in history, his father did not die. He abdicated the throne. He was just like, peace, I'm out. And then in the real story, when he was escaping prison, he lost two toes to frostbite. Nice. Did you have anything else? No, that, there was really a dirty Well, there was one, one other one that I found. that um, When this was shown on TV, apparently there's two different versions of this film. There's a the theatrical version and the TV version. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth was in the TV version as the opening scene of With the movie. With the same people? Yeah, same exact movie. What? But they cut out this scene for theaters to make it a little shorter. But basically the opening scene is her sending all the soldiers... To Ireland. To Ireland, which is uh, probably why the synopsis... And it would have made more sense. Yeah, because yeah. unless... I guess... And that's kind of how the other movies were when they opened. You were kind of like, okay, what's going on? What's the conflict? So unless you knew that part of history, you were kind of like, I don't know what's going Maybe on. Maybe we should have read that little thing at the beginning, that little blurb. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have been yeah. helpful. But those were the only facts I could find. There so, wasn't much. So are we going to fight? That seems really on the nose and kind of <laughs> obvious, but sure, why not? Let's fight our way through this. Well, there was a lot of fighting in this movie. There was definitely a lot of fighting, so there this should go fairly quickly. Yeah, so. there's yeah. So the movie opens, Ireland, 1587, and I was thinking as the credits were going, oh, I got Rob Roy vibes already. I knew imme- I, immediately, I was like, oh, this is going to be just like it's, Rob Roy. And, and then it's just like, Hugh succeeds Hugh. The prophecy is born. And you're supposed to know what that is. It's like, what? What does okay. this mean? And, and he's all talking about, oh no, I've got to unite the clans, we're not going to go fight. You are forgetting... Like, the most important thing of this movie is the opening with that Irish wolfhound that I was really disappointed didn't, like, accompany him through the rest of the movie, (laughs) because that would have been great. And it just would have been fantastic. But yeah, he has to unite all the clans because his dad died, and so his uh, mom is like, hey, you gotta go unite all the clans, go visit whatever, and they casually mention this girl Kathleen. Like, And and all the lords, they all just want to fight. They're like, yeah, we'll get them together and we'll all go fight! Ha! <laughs> yeah, and he's like, no, we're not no, going to no, fight. No, 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 we're going to do a treaty. So he shows up at the McSweeney's or O'Neill's or McSweeney slash O'Neill's. It's unclear. It's, no, well, he said he's like, I'm of O'Neill, but I'm McS- It's It's a weird thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, oh, yeah, the Hugh prophecy has been fulfilled. Everybody shut up. Let's listen. We're all going to unite and... Yeah, and there was another dog at the table eating the food next to the kid. Yeah, thing. another Irish wolf. Oh my god, it was great. I was really hoping this was going to be a trend and there was going to be a bunch of them throughout the movie, but then yeah. there's no more. Yeah, Lots no more. of missed no opportunity. Moss. No moss. Um, so he has to have a brawl with Tom O'Neill. There's some good WWE action here. It's so stupid. Like, just they're... He's clearly better than this O'Neill guy. Like he. Well, they're having a good time while they're wrestling. They're just fucking around. They're drinking and having a great time. Well, and because this O'Neill guy has been trying to hit it with Kathleen, and everybody knows that like Kathleen and Hugh are basically a item. Well, were they? She was like not a hundred percent. No, she was because as soon as she saw him, she was like, "Okay, peace, O'Neill." But she didn't know he was like back or whatever. I guess. I guess. Um. So yeah, he wants to desperately pound Kathleen. And so he's outside being a gross cheese ball with her. Do you believe I'm right? I hope you're right, Hugh. You're so lovely. Do you know when you first came in, my heart turned over. Oh, no. I've missed you. I didn't 
didn't realize how much. Kathleen. Well, he's just telling her how much he missed her. My and... heart turned over when I saw you. Oh my god. And then the, the O'Neill guy comes outside. He's like, hey, they're dancing inside. Let's go. And he's like, hey, I'm in charge. You watch this ship out there. We're going to go inside. Yeah. And so then there's this scene. We wake up with them all hungover. Yeah, because the, the, I keep wanting to call him the king. He's not the king, but the head of this... The, the McSweeney. The yeah. McSweeney's. He just constantly is drinking. Yeah. Like, every scene that he's in, he is drinking. He's Irish. Even on the battlefield. Every scene he's in, he's drinking. Man, if you were about to go to war, I'd be fucking pounding him back, too. But then you wouldn't be able to, like, fight very well. Bullshit. You'd be, like, all swaying and you'd get stabbed easily. I didn't say get plowed. I'd be drinking. But he's getting plowed, like, every scene. Because then these guys from the ship show up and they're like, here, here's all these gifts. We have all these goods to trade. You should come back to our ship. We're English. Oh, this is not sketchy at all. Like, that was, was so obviously a trap. Yeah. Like, the most obvious trap. So Ever. they so they get those guys on there, and it's a trap for Hugh. Mm-hmm. They they let the McSweeney go, and they take Hugh to Dublin Castle. Wait, I guess the English have occupied. Yeah, well, they're taking him because they know that he's trying to unite the clans, and yeah. so they're just trying they're to keep him all apart. Traitor. Yeah, and. They're out, like, in the grounds, and there's this weird scene where the guards are, like, getting the prisoners to fight one another with sticks. I think that the 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 uh, prisoners want to fight each other with sticks. Right. Because, like, I guess that's true, because they all stop when the, like, the leads guy comes yeah, out. Yeah, they, they're just, I mean, they're not trying to hurt each other. They're just fucking doing basically, like, what the yard is now in prison, where everybody yeah. lifts weights. They're just exercising. Well... And when the Leeds guy comes out and then he says he's going to fight um, I Hugh, love this scene I so love much. this scene too. Okay, the best part of this scene is the fighting is actually pretty good. Yeah. But the part that's so good is when he bests him and then he like calls the guards and everybody's laughing at guards. him. Guards, yeah, and he just gets fucking embarrassed. He's so embarrassed. And so he says, oh, you're going to be in solitary. I'm taking my sword and going you, home. You get your leg irons on. Yeah, You're dangerous. Everybody laughing at him is the best part of this. Yeah, because he's going to break his fucking arm because he was losing badly. Yeah. And... Uh, da, 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 da. He's just... yeah. That captain guy is just such a gross little pussy bitch. It's so bad. It's... He's pretty gross. Yeah. I mean, is he is he grosser than the captain guy in... Is it Sword in the Rose? I can't remember. But there's the guy who wants to marry... Who, no, who, that guy is way like grosser. pretends to be her friend or whatever. Way fucking yeah, grosser. like yeah, yeah. Similar... That guy, that guy is super gross. Yeah, yeah. And then we get another amazing scene when he's in there and he meets the O'Toole guy because the O'Toole guy is in the the cell over from him and he like shoves the little brick. Yeah, Sean O'Toole is low key a super good character in this. He's like. He's really good. He might yeah. be one of might be my favorite. It's a tie between him and the um, the O'Neill O'Neill guy. Yeah, the it's, O'Neill is definitely my favorite. But I really do like Sean O'Toole. And he's like telling him, "Oh, I got this steel for my leg brace. Oh, it, I used it to chip this block out so I can talk to you." Well, he talked to his friend that was there before. Yeah. And so then he gives it to hugh but then the guards come so he has to hide the steel and there's this scene where you're like oh are they gonna find the steel and then they don't and and so he digs the bar out of the chimney in one night eh, it's unclear if it's really one well, night because he said he had a week in there okay here here's the only part like thing in this movie that i'm like really he's so thin he would have fit through that without having to chisel that is it. true like he, he but i think that's just one of those things where they just made a little thing and then just okay but he gets it out and so he escapes and then another great scene the escape scene is one of my favorite this is one of my favorite parts of the movie actually and is the first escape sneaking scene. sneaking around and running and he finds an empty keg and Sets himself adrift in the yeah. water. I totally thought, oh, he's going to get away. Yeah, it's I did good, too. Like, I, thought, I, I thought this was going to be much more Rob Roy than this. No, because then he meets O'Toole's father who, like, helps him. But then what happens is all the soldiers are closing in. So Hugh realizes, oh, there's no way we're going to get away. So he, like, pretends, like, basically makes it look like the guy was turning him in. Yeah. So that they don't get in trouble also. So they can go back and tell all the clans. Right. 
what's going on. Uh, and that barely works, but it does. Um, and they take him back and put him in the dungeon. Why would they put him in the same cell with Sean O'Toole with the guy that they knew that he got the thing from? Because it's supposed to be a gross, wet dungeon where it's like really unpleasant to be. So they and there's just no put them books in there. Yeah, there's no books. There's no niceties. There's just mice and water. But it's just so like, why would you do that? Like. Clearly, they're going to escape again somehow. Well, yeah. And they that, didn't put him in shackles. He's like, you're going to be in shackles, and he didn't put him in shackles again. No, well, they did. Oh, wait, he did. Yeah, that's yeah, right, because he, yeah. he had to take him off. That's right. Uh, so then McSweeney shows up and brings a treaty to Captain Douchebag. With Kathleen. They all show up. Yeah, with up. Kathleen. When I first told you were here, I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. We thought and prayed and hoped they'd let you go. I've been frightened for you. We have so little time now. Don't talk about that now. And she actually, what she does, does kind of save the day. No, it totally saves the day. That's what they did on purpose. Um, She goes into the dungeon, and after they do their little flirty play about of words and touching, she gives him... Don't they kiss at this point, too? No. I think they do. No, Before they, the guard comes in, I think they do. They, they did not. No, because he says, let me look at you. We only have a minute, and let me touch you, and then he kisses her face. Uh, I don't call that a kiss, yeah. but okay. Um, you kiss faces in Europe. I mean, no, on. he was ki- like he kissed her on the lips. I, I don't they, recall no, that. they did. Maybe he did. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, because I wrote literally, smoochy smoochy. Oh. <laughs> I God, I recall exactly the opposite that I was like, why aren't they kiss- kissing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, but yeah. Uh, so she gives him this bejeweled necklace. Yeah, and at first I was like, oh, what? What's it didn't that? really see make sense. I was sense like, at wouldn't, first. wouldn't wouldn't she wouldn't usually she give him her like her handkerchief or something? But okay, okay, yeah. Here's this necklace. Um, so they go back down. To the dungeon, and uh, the O'Neill gets in a fight with Captain Leeds. Yeah, because he's like, I don't see any gentlemen because, here. Because Ke- and because Leeds is being a total douche to them, not being a gentleman. Well, and he won't. He's like, no, you can't talk to the viceroy, who's like his boss. He's like, no, sorry, you can't talk to him. Yeah, he's not here. We can't discuss this. Fuck off. And so he gets mouthy and arrested. Yeah. And ends up in the dungeon. And ends up in the dungeon where he... Okay, where there... He takes to catching mice. Like, I thought there was... He's gonna entertain himself. I thought there was gonna be something with the mice. Like, I thought... Oh, no, no, no. But it was like one of the scenes in the movie that afterwards I was like, oh, that was delightful. But it it didn't really need to be there, but... Yeah, but it's one of those things that just shows I, him as a person. Yeah, like, I really you know, liked the scene. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's so cute. He likes mice. Yeah. Um, So they meet this new jailer, Martin, which is like the most un-Irish name I've ever heard in my life. Well, he's English-Irish. Right, but... so He's kind of like a weak-minded little weirdo of a guy. Because they basically guilt him. They're like, oh, what would your mother say about you? Well, they guilt and bribe him. Well, yeah, they give him the jewels, or part of the jewels from the... um, From the necklace. From the necklace. And he's like, oh, fuck. Like, the money really turns him on. Because he wants to buy a farm, and he wants to move his mom out there. Well, he doesn't want to be a... a I mean, he's essentially a slave to the jail. Yeah, his job is to change out the shit buckets. Yeah. That's literally his job. And... So then they're plotting their escape, and basically it comes down to we have to do it tonight because you're going to be transferred to the Tower of London tomorrow. So they then we get the second escape scene, which I love the second escape scene too because they start off in dresses. Oh my god! Which like this until was the- they get kind of caught by the guards and they kill those guards, lose the dresses, and. They basically, then they're going to go, well, and as they're escaping, the gimpy guy. Sean O'Toole's like, no, I can't go. Obviously, I can't fucking go. Like, I'm going to slow you down, which I was like, oh, you can make it. But then I'm like, wow. No, he really couldn't. Yeah, he wasn't going to, because there's a ton of running. 
A lot of running. Well, swimming and running. Yeah. And freaking O'Neal just can't shut the fuck up. He's like, rah, rah, rah. I'm yeah. like rah. And I'm just like, oh my god. Just- but it makes it so much more realistic. Because there's always that one guy who has to be like, well, ah. And this happens many times throughout this movie where they're like, Shh, they're just like, why are well, you Well, yeah, but almost the entire time they're in the water, uh, Hugh has his mouth on on the O'Neill's map. Well, and he gets, like, his leg slashed, and then they're running out through the field, and he's like, oh, I can't run. I need support. And I'm like, your leg is not that bad. Like... Mm, it got stabbed. I don't know, man. It got, like, slashed. Well, it looked like a sta- slash, but if you watched, it was a stab. Okay, fair enough. But I was like, really, dude? You need the support of two guys? Um... So they're going out in the woods and they say goodbye to the Martin guy because he's like, no, no, I'm going to the coast. Like, I'm not going with you. Yeah, I don't, go- don't want to get caught with you, essentially. Because he knows they're going to get caught. Like, yeah. And so then they're they're going along and in the middle of the night, these ladies come. And rescue them. They're like, you'll be safer at our cottage. And uh, this and, is and, the most ridiculous part of the whole movie. And O'Neill goes to work. <laughs> He, he puts in reps in He is, here. like, pretending to be ill beyond belief with each sister that comes in the but room. each one of those bitches eat it up and want, oh, yeah. want to get down. I've gone bad on you. I'll be grateful to you for the rest of my life. I'll always remember you, Bridget. Mara, not Bridget. That's my youngest sister. Moira. Oh, that's a beautiful name. As lovely as yourself. Oh, my head aches, Moira. Now, you stop that and lie quiet. He's like, oh, you have such a healing touch. And he keeps calling them the wrong name. And they're like, that's my other sister. Oh, you have such a beautiful name. And they're, oh my gosh. And he's just really laying it on thick. Yeah, he's putting in work. And then the mom comes in. She's like, I can feed him. And he's like, oh, never mind. I can manage. <laughs> I got it. It would have been almost funnier if he tried to put the moves on the mom, too. Yeah. Which is what I thought he was going to do. And then It looked like he was going to for like half a second. And then I think he thought better of it. He's like, all right, all right, all right. And then he didn't. So then, but then, the next morning, before they can leave, they have to have a fake wake. Oh, yeah, because the soldiers come, and so the, she pretends to be this old woman. She's like, oh, we're in mourning, and they go in there, and he he's laying down. He's all covered up with coins on his eyes. The O'Neill is covered up with coins oh. on his eyes, and it's supposed to be his her mother. And they're all in there with their shawls, like, leaned over and, like, crying. crying and, and sniffling. And she's like, oh, she died of a contagion, like, trying to get him to leave, and he's still poking around. And he, like, stabs behind this curtain, and... They, but they fool him. It works. Yep. And so, in the meantime, the Leeds guy has decided he's going to take the Donegal Castle before Hugh can get back. Or, and without any permission from. From the Queen. From the Queen or the Viceroy or anybody. I do what I want. Fuck this guy. He's not escaping me. Yeah. Like. There were definitely a lot of similarities to Rob Roy. So they go aspect. take the castle, Kathleen and his mom. And immediately once uh, him and the O'Neill are rescued by some of the clansmen. They find out that's been they taken. They find out what happened. So they go immediately into planning a battle to go take it back. Well, yeah, it's his home. So he's well, like. And, and his home. Yeah. The he, home and hoe. That's not a very smart plan. And his mom. But didn't they. T- see, this is what was confusing. It seemed like they took them back to the Do- the Dublin castle that he was kept at, but it really was no. actually his castle that they fucking blew up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, they. It was at his castle. That's how he knew all the secret yeah, entryways yeah. and how he was able to outsmart people. But yeah, basically they're they're firing cannons at the front, but then they're blowing out the back at the same time, so they don't know they're blowing out the back, so they can sneak in. And and get the, the uh, gate raised up. Right. And so they have this... It, this is a pretty good battle scene, actually. It actually... I was surprised at how effective it was. It was. It didn't go on too long. And it, no, no, and no. And every part of it was, like, 
engaging and interesting and lots of close range arrow work which you never see in oh these yeah movies. lots of people getting shot with arrows yeah it's so always many. like it's always like oh i got shot from like a million miles away no this is all like close range arrow work yeah which i was i'm just like how did they do that but i i don't know it worked it looked good you're it right did look it, good. Did, it looked good so so it ends the the battle ends with Hugh versus Leeds. Again. One-on-one. And, of course, Leeds can't beat him because he can't. And he's like, okay, you could just kill us all now. And he was like, oh, no, you're silly. You, All your men can go and tell the queen what happened. And you're going to stay here until you let my friend O'Toole go yeah, from jail. Yeah, until you let Sean O'Toole out. Yeah, so he's... And the look on his face, to me, looked like... He's like, oh, no, I already killed Sean O'Toole. He probably <laughs> but, did. But... But that that's just I was going off the vibe off the look of his face, so I don't know. He probably and then they're so they're winners and they have a huge party. The party is pretty great too. Everybody yeah. is like with with the McSweeney with his fucking das five boot. gallon bucket <laughs> DOS boot of okay. booze. Is it beer? Is it wine? Who it, it's, knows? Maybe it's, it's prob- all the above. It's probably like mead or something. Mead would be too strong, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. But no, he, and then he's dipping it into this giant, this is like, I don't even know how many gallons bucket of alcohol. It is like. It's at least three. It's a, well, it's more than that because it's like taller than the king. He has to like reach up to get into it. So it's probably like five feet tall and like two feet wide. Oh, I meant his his personal bucket, yeah. No, but the one that he dips it in. Yeah, the like the cask thing, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Huge. And so then. Hughes. Maybe everybody just dumps all their hooch in that big thing and they just start drinking it. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> everybody dr- dumps like their family brew yeah, in there. Yeah, it's just all the alcohol stew. It's brandy, it's wine, it's beer, it's ale. <laughs> Gross. Uh, so then Hugh sneaks Kathleen away and I th- I think they're going to have a scene but it just pans out of yeah, them. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I thought they were going to have like a I love you, let's get married Let's make out. Let's have ten children. That's it. That's the movie. That's the end of the movie. It was great. Fighting Prince of Donegal. Yeah, it, it was true to its word. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of fighting in it. Yeah, because we really didn't even get into all the parties had fights with yeah. the drinking. At the end of the movie and in the beginning, and there was always... People were always being Irish. Because, okay, at the end of the movie, the... Um, What's the guy, his friend, the the guy who's always trying to get the ladies, what's his name? O'Neill, the O'Neill guy who's trying to he's, get ladies. He's trying to get every lady, and every lady's husband then goes and punch, tries to punch him, and it's like, he does it to like three different ladies. I would have really liked to see the three ladies from the hut okay, show up for him. I was hoping that too, that at least, that they would have shown up. That's what yeah. I was really hoping for. Because that's, that's who he deserves. But we're going to just <laughs> land this into my first award, the Irish Bee Drinking and Fighting Award. Yeah, that's... Because <laughs> this movie is a lot of the Irish be well, drinking I mean, and fighting. isn't the director Irish? <laughs> I don't think so, I but think... he might be. Oh, Illering? Like, and the, the... Well, at least the Robert Riley guy... Oh, Herlihy. Herlihy. Yeah, he could be. And the Robert Riley guy, he's probably yeah, Irish. Yeah, probably. So they're probably like, let's make it really authentic. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I just... I, I enjoy the Irish be drinking and No, drinking. it was great. I really enjoyed it as well. Um, My first award that I made up is the Shut the Fuck Up Award. Why can nobody be quiet when they need to be? Because literally, it was not just them in the water. It was a scene where there was guards outside his cell, and he was, like, talking, and the guy's like, hey, shut up. And there was when the ladies were by the door, and the mom was like, hey, be quiet. You know why? Because nobody's ever seen a movie. It was just like, oh, my God. Shut up. <laughs> See, my second award was the That Escalated Quickly Disney Love Award. Because, like, immediately, all of a sudden, when she came to see him, she's like, well, I'm going to marry this guy, obviously. Okay, but here's the thing. It's I'll v- wait for you forever. It's very much like Robin Hood made Marion, where they have all this history. Because when they were first having their first intimate scene together, she was like, I didn't know if you'd come back. Like, they clearly... What, history when they were 12? Yeah, Robin Hood I made Marion. Yeah, I know. Like, but And same with these two. But it's like, really? Yeah, no. My it, summer it, crush it, from night no. from fifteen eighty 
to... No, it completely made sense because the O'Reilly guy was also like, oh, I'm going to take your girl. Like, he knew that that was that guy's girl. Yeah, so, like, yeah, it yeah. it totally made sense to I me. Still, I just feel like it escalated and escalated really quickly. That's, that's fair. And she's like, I'll wait as long as it takes. I don't care. The other one I made up is... Ooh, two made up awards. Prison Mouse Friends. Super bizarre scene that has no bearing on the rest <laughs> of the movie, but I really like, and it just kind of fits the tone of the movie. Even when they escape, he has to let it. That's what I mean. Yeah. It was just it, on paper that doesn't really go with like anything else. Anything no. else, no. but it really adds to the overall charmingness of this movie. So, and then I'm going to give all of the country girls the Cloris Leachman Award. I had the same thing. Because they were ready to hit it right now. Yeah. Well, there's probably no men out there. They want to get pregnant today. (laughs) Well, then they're, like, probably in competition with each other. You know, like, they're, oh, there's an eligible man. I got to, you know, got to get it. Um, I gave this one, which is not one we've given out really ever, I think, A Sword in the Rose. Where did this movie come from? Why is it so good? Because it, it, I thought about it, but it, I, I just didn't think it quite reached that level. I because did. Sword of the Rose is fucking amazing. No, it is, but I... This is almost that good, but it's not quite that good, I think. I disagree. Okay. I really liked this movie. Okay. Like, a lot. Mo- a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. All right, that's fair. Um, I gave Leeds the dickhole award, because he is just a terrible dickhole. Yeah, I, I honestly, he was, but I was like... He's just, he wasn't like, I don't know. As, I don't know, he's pretty dick holy. He's pretty bad. But the last one I had was a Ken Meet Barbie award for when Hugh meets the O'Toole guy in the jail cell. I really liked their introduction <laughs> with the. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, any surprises, disappointments? I, just like the overall fun of the movie. Just like that I just was way better than I thought. I was I wasn't really looking forward to watching this cuz I like initial watch I found Rob Roy kind of boring and I thought this was going to be basically just like Rob Roy and I found this a lot more entertaining. You thought Rob Roy was boring? Initially on first watch. Yeah, I guess you did. Well, you didn't watch it a second time. But so. no, I meant in retrospect it's less boring, but I, it, it I yeah, that's right. I liked it way more than you did. I thought it was great right but away. I thought I think this is better than Rob Roy. Yeah, I could debate it, but so I was I was surprised at that because I wasn't really looking forward to watching it. So <laughs> I wanted more embarrassment for Leeds. I wanted the Queen to take his head off. Well, and that's what I. So as far as like remake it, the only well, I guess there's a couple things. I I really wanted to see the Queen coming and taking down him at the in conjunction with. Hugh being reunited with O'Toole. Like, a whole scene where they bring him there, the queen is there. Yeah. And there's that kind of... Even if it's not historically accurate. Like For, for a sequel, I wanted the third Hugh. Like, his, like, this Hugh dies and the third one dies, and the Irish people attack London. Oh my god. That would be a great movie. They and sack London. <laughs> the only other thing I had was underuse of the Irish wolfhounds. Like, I wish that they would have released the hounds during the battle scene. That would have been great. That would have been awesome. It, like, if he would have had the dog That was him. the same dog in both things, though. I know it was. Because I, I was like, that's the same dog. <laughs> but I was like, oh my god, why didn't they release the hounds? That it was a been, beautiful dog. It was a beautiful way. dog. And it would have been great. Any final thoughts? What an unexpected adventure. Fuck yeah. Okay, so you get, did you get a bougie? No, of course not. I couldn't not. find yeah, a budget or a gross. Out. Yeah. So what do you think the Rotten Tomato score for this film um, is? I mean, I'm pretty sure I liked it more than the people and critics did, but um, probably like a 55%. So there is no critic score. The people give it a 17 which makes no fucking sense in any fucking world okay, I've done. ever fucking lived in. I'm done. That's just so, really bad. It's like, what what movie did you watch? I just, I don't get it. I don't get yeah, that I don't at get all. it at all. It's like, what? You weren't delighted by this? To you me, didn't think this was fun? This was one of the better movies that we've watched, period, in yeah, my it opinion. Yeah, re- it was really good. It I really, really enjoyed good. it. Really good. Um, so I guess in that case, Kat, what was your rating? So I really liked this and I can say with confidence 
an 85% Ooh. or 8.5 out of 10 ridiculously oversized glasses of alcohol, which we do not know what it is. <laughs> so I'm not, I mean, I'm not that far off, but I think we've kind of set the bar for exactly where I am and you are with this. I gave it a 77. Huh? Checks yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. So just not quite as much, but. I still really, really, really enjoyed this movie. I think it's because I was expecting it to be more in like a 50% range for me. Because I was like, "Eh, it'll probably be like a less good version of Rob Roy. My only problem, it was just like a fucking hair slow. Like, Mm. just, just slow enough where I was like, yeah, uh, okay. I have to knock a couple of points off of for being slow. I didn't find it slow. I found every scene to be... Interesting, and I thought the dialogue was really underrated. Like Interesting and ing- well, the dialogue was great. Like, that was actually, I don't. That's what I don't understand about the Moon Spinners guy. Like, where the, where the fuck did he come from? Every time he said words in this movie, it was like this guy's some great actor. Well, I just don't get it. And in the Moon Spinners, also, he's never smiling, and he's smiling a lot in this movie. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and. I guess maybe he just has more range in this movie and it makes him more enjoyable. Yeah. He's not like, hey, little girl, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to uh, statutorily rape you by accident. Which yeah. is like all he does in the Moon Spinners is like, Ugh. Reluctantly statutorily rape yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I normally wouldn't, but I just, I have to. Uh, yeah, because that's exactly how that movie goes. <laughs> All the way until they end up on the perfume boat. Um, yeah, yeah, we won't talk about that. Right they just now. put Haley Mills in a lot of situations with older gentlemen <laughs> that are inappropriate. So now it's time for Cats, a favorite part of the podcast. And this time we get number 52. Ooh. Keeping it old, kicking it old school. Yeah, clearly. No, we're not, because that's an absent-minded professor. Oh, whew, thank God. <laughs> How about number 147? <laughs> kicking it newer school, but that's the fox and the hound. Oh, is that the 80s? Yeah. Okay, I was going to guess the 80s for that period of time. So how about number 205? Ooh, that's spicy. That is a spicy era, but it's probably something we've already seen. It's James and the Giant Peach. Oh. <laughs> How about number 294? That, see, that's what I mean. You keep rolling, it just keeps getting larger numbers. The Santa Claus 3. Oh, my wow. God. What? Is it okay? Oh my god! So what we actually get is either going to be fantastic or it's going to. This is all leading number up. Number 400. Frozen. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I I actually am kind of enjoying the the like extended dance version of rolling movies. It's kind of funny. <sighs> Number eighty one. How about that? Eighty one having some fun. Oh, there we go. Eighty one. Literally, the movie directly after the Prince of Donegal. Is it really? <laughs> it is really <laughs> literally the movie Prince of Donegal's number eighty. Wait, what's the and the pr- and the movie right before this movie, or right after this movie, is Monkeys Go Home. Oh. I don't know. I have no idea. So from 1966, it's a movie called Follow Me, Boys, with an exclamation point. I think this is a, um, it's Dude from Absent Minded Professor, Fred McMurray. Sweet. I think. Fuck, I, I hope think so. it's Fred McMurray. If it's a Fred McMurray it's either, movie, it's either, I am it's stoked. either Fred McMurray or Dean Jones, but, but I don't but, remember. But would Dean Jones have done two in a row with Monkeys Go Home? Probably. Did he ever do two in a row? I don't think so. I don't know, but but I think it's Fred McMurray. I, th- I think that from, I'm, we're watching Apps to Minor Professor. So follow me, boys. Like, I just, what could this even be about? Boy Scouts? Could be about Boy Scouts. I think it's a Boy Scout that's, movie. But hopefully not like an accurate Boy Scout movie. Well, no, they wouldn't have made that back that's then. That's just not right. But This is like, follow me into the woods, boys, and then it's like foibles ensue. Yeah, that that could be interesting. Could could be that. And what, there's going to be like a rival Boy Scout troop? Or just like mishaps with bears and raccoons and tent 
balls and, and then it's gonna have random cut-ins of nature documentaries yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. disney w- did love doing that back yeah. then They're like oh hey let's use some of our documentary footage in this movie yeah because we have so much of it from our multiple expeditions yeah exactly okay sounds good all right cool so next week uh follow me boys not a good title <laughs> <laughs> It's just weird when you say it. <laughs> it, it just doesn't. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah. Or like, is it going to follow be, me, comma or, boys? Doesn't make sense. Or to maybe me. follow me, Fred. Mc- follow me, boys. Maybe Fred McMurray plays a pimp, and <laughs> he's taking the boys to go see prostitutes. <laughs> he's like, follow me, boys. That would be horrible. Yes, it would. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. In the meantime. Uh, like, subscribe, give us a review of five stars. Yeah. Uh, phone a friend, leave us a review on all of the platforms. Uh, Follow us on said platforms. Send us an email at disneyoddpod at gmail.com just to say what's up. Or just keep listening. We like that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tune in next week for Follow Me Boys so we can find out if it's Boy Scouts or prostitutes. Or molestation. Let's hopefully not go there. This has been Disney Odd Pod. I'm Kat. I'm D. Bye! Bye. I didn't realize I hadn't turned it all the way You coming, Luke? Come on, bud. And so I, like, stuck my hand up to get it to stop. You coming or not? You jerk. He doesn't want to. He's just... He's like, oh, yeah, I'm coming. No, I'm not. He just wanted to see what we're doing. And then he said, oh, no, screw that. I don't want to be in there. Yeah, it was like doing this but faster, and I was like, why hasn't it stopped yet? I went like this, and I was like, oh, wait, shit, that's not done yet. There's one more. You know. Yeah, the genius of ceiling pants to not ever have it be able to tell when it's actually fucking off. Is that like a common thing? I don't know. We didn't have ceiling fans Yeah, growing every up, ceiling so. fan is just like that, and it's stupid. And you can never tell when it's off because it's got all that momentum still. Because our house was so big, it was just always cold. It would have helped if they would have had a ceiling fan in that big, tall room. No, I maybe mean, we did have a ceiling fan there in the tall room. Are you sure? Yeah. Remind me to ask my parents, because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, wait, maybe there was one in there. I don't think so. We'll have to find out. <laughs> Next on stuff to ask parents about the <laughs> The haunted mansion. Oh god. I don't know what. <laughs> well it's unlikely that, that I mean it could come up, but I you, you're unlikely. gonna jinx it and that's gonna be a thing. Technically there's two haunted mansions. Really? Yeah. There was one in like the early two thousands with Eddie Murphy. Sounds hideous. It didn't do very well. I don't know why they thought it would do better the second time around. Because they made the Jungle Cruise movie and they're like, oh my god, it's so cool. Well, but I don't know.